Uh, good afternoon. <coughs> I'm uh, talking on the heat transfer in a forward facing step. Actually, this uh, <coughs> importance of this is uh, in the simple geometry. So, what we have is uh, this is a outline. So, you know, what the governing equations and important. So, what the uh, thing which comes to I mean, an requirement is that even though it's a simple geometry, it has got a, a sudden uh, contraction and uh, in expansion and when that happens the use of com uh, normal turbulence models which is a eddy viscosity linear and nonlinear how do they behave and uh, what do we do really get out of the thing and which one has to be used for a specific application does it need meets the requirement or no and what are and comparing different uh, turbulence models with heat transfer what is the results coming that is the idea of this particular work so, what we, we are trying uh, basically uh, a capsulon, k omega, SST and V2F and SN, uh, LES models on the, this thing and then try to find out with different parameters what do happen. So, this capsulon model, these are just uh, for who are not very familiar with the thing, but probably most of you are familiar then we can just go ahead. So, this is the one which is very commonly uh, used in the uh, industry by kinetic energy and the uh, dissipation rate and it actually has been sold very good for the flow around a bluff body and then these are the governing equations uh, normally we have a equation on k and this is equation on epsilon and of course we have the closure uh, coefficients like this and this is the one which has been used and then uh, these are the how we calculate the initial conditions for k and epsilon based on the input parameters what is the boundary conditions and initial conditions we do it. Then we go to the k omega model which is again based on the omega which is the specific dissipation rate rather than the epsilon itself. But it has uh, been evolved because the k epsilon was not able to predict the things properly sometime. So, especially for a flow through a pipe band this gives a better results than as compared to the k epsilon. And these are the basic governing equations used for turbulent kinetic and specific dissipation rate which is omega used. Use. And of course, we also got uh, various, uh, this is the uh, Reynolds number. And then we have got SST proposed by Mentor, which is the combination of k epsilon and k omega models. So, we use k epsilon in the free stream and k omega in the near words. And with ha what happens with that case, k, k omega analysis, but because this has got the good thing of both k epsilon and k omega models and that is why we will be using that one. So, these are the basic governing equation just for the sake of completeness I have included in this class. Now, this is a V2F model which is not commonly used in many applications, but it is a nonlinear eddy viscosity model. Uh, the previous ones were linear eddy viscosity models, this is a nonlinear eddy viscosity model. And this one uh, can uh, uh, give the, the one, uh, catch, catch uh, the uh, turbulence in a much better way. And we are trying to incorporate that also in this code and then see what happens with that one. And these are the set of equations which uh, that we been, been uh, modeled in this list. Actually, these are all well uh, in the, when documented. So, we are also going for LES, this is the uh, fundamental LES model. So, we are using the different uh, uh, when LES also with what happens. This is basically used for the combustion acoustics and simulations. So, these places this gives you a, but it is a computationally more expensive definitely than the previous models but can give capture the things better. So, this with these things, so these are uh, different models. So, what we are uh, trying to do is we basically use the open source CFD code open form and this is a base solver available in with that is the uh, uh, symbol form. We uh, uh, modify that code to incorporate these various turbulence models and also this does not have a energy equation built into it. So, we added energy equation. So, this was the original uh, structure of the uh, code available and this is what we have, we have modified uh, by adding temperature equations and then pressure equations etcetera onto this. And uh, this is actually uh, gives you some uh, scripts of what you have been actually done into the code which may not be of interest. If any uh, question is there of course, we can answer those things. This is how the code has got modified and also we have added the energy equation onto it. So, which was not there earlier. So, this is how we have added the energy equation onto that. Now, then uh, also a, uh, I mean uh, uh, to solve we need a uh, case file. So, we had a prepared a case file before including all these models 
we can try any one at a time in some that sort of things and then the this is a grid manager etc. So, these are standard uh, open form uh, schemes which has been used there. Now, this is a uh, three uh, type of parametric studies have been carried out one is by changing the step height. So, step height means this is the uh, tunnel. So, in this one this is the inlet and this is this portion and all the three cases this portion is heated and this is the uh, no slip wall this is the inlet this is the outlet this is the uh, this is a geometry which we are showing. The first one what we are doing is we are studying the step height. So, this is the uh, 15 percent, this 30 percent, this 45 percent of this channel width. So, what happens with that and then we try with different uh, turbulence models and see how the things are behaving that is the objective. So, going to the one. So, this is the input uh, parameter which has been used for this case the tem inlet temperature to uh, this one and the wall temperature or the bottom has been this and the velocity has been kept corresponding to a Reynolds number of 5000. So, this is the results for k epsilon this is just to give you a glimpse of what happens if the step height is changed of course, these are the very obvious results for uh, the temperatures and then uh, velocity contours and the streamlines. So, this uh, what happens in this one when you have a 30 percent we are having two counter rotating uh, vertices over here and in other cases say, but this is the one result, but our more interested one is in this. So, what happens suppose you use, use different turbulence models. So, this is k epsilon this has been done for 45 percent uh, case uh, k epsilon k m k m l s t n l s n v 2 f what happens for this case this is the more important thing. So, if you see it here this three things may be giving almost the same, but when it comes to this one there is a lot of difference. So, uh, why that is coming and which one is to be here that is still we are investigating. So, this is not yet completed. So, that we are still investigating on this results. Then this is the uh, results for the velocity uh, contours. So, similar also here we see it may be in V2 V2 F and LES it is the same, but k omega is always behaving in a totally I mean simple k omega is behaving in a uh, different method and this is the temperature contours uh, coming for this one. So, here also if you see it LES the uh, even or the temperature scales are the same, but LES is giving a different behavior and in now there is the work is still going on to I mean basically capture the reasons and what is uh, really happening which one is to be believed which one is not correct that is uh, still going on. And this is streamlines. So, here also streamlines the areas one is capturing in a much different way. And this all is steady the state? all are steady state results, steady state results, no transients. So, this, this one was a steady state or a mean average? It is not average, it is a, uh, it's a steady state results, whatever I am showing. It's not a tra transient. Uh, it has been taken as a 2D. Of course, it is a small strip of 3D, but it is a 2 uh, and the other two conditions is symmetry boundary condition. So, being symmetry boundary condition is a 2D. So, the uh, is the streamline plots happening now and the, the vorticity and this is also the vorticity uh, this sorry this is the, velo uh, the vorticity contours for the, the three cases. And, and for LES you do averaging stepwise averaging or? Yes sir. Or you are not LES in 2D mode? LES in 2D mode. So, this so one? It's not it is no, no, LES is still there. So this is to come. Yeah, it is ah, actually it is not LES. What what we have done is we have taken a we will try to do it as a 3D with a specific thickness. That's what the plan now it is because LES if in 2D has no meaning. So we have to so so we have to 2, 2D has no meaning. So we have to go to a 3D space and then give it. But if, since we have considered as a thickness. But the uh, boundary conditions were not given as wall. So, it has been given only as a uh, been a symmetry. So, it is a 3D analysis, but with symmetry boundary conditions. So, basically what means that your LES is also minimal? Huh. Because it is not turbulence. Yeah, it is not uh, turbulence. Fine, right. So, then uh, we have studied the effect of uh, Reynolds number. Uh, so, with uh, only one particular mm -hmm. case, three Reynolds numbers have been uh, studied. And uh, this uh, is the effect for a different Reynolds number of when, uh, pressure, then uh, velocity, and of course uh, streamlines. So this is actually with one uh, uh, set of results. But uh, when it comes to the in th the thing, this is the uh, with different with uh, 20 percent. So uh, Reynolds number 500. 
So the pressure conduits are being given here. So they have also we are just what you have said, we are just going to the uh, apparatus. So this is the difference is coming in this course when the um, velocity conduits and the uh, streamline probes here also we uh, definitely get a different thing in V2 physics almost totally a different set of results have been observed. And then the turbulent uh, this with the vorticity conduits in this also. Now subsequently I have also studied the effect of Prandtl number that means that we change the fluid and then uh, with that uh, is defined uh, what is what is happening. Sorry. So this is the uh, pressure uh, control. So we have taken two fluids, one is air and other is water. With that, uh, what is the effect coming? Actually, this is uh, from the heat transfer point of view. It uh, makes sense to change the Prandtl number, which has not been reported earlier. So then we have the streamline force also for the same case with the same uh, uh, Reynolds number, but a different Prandtl number. And then also for the different uh, turbulence models, so what is the uh, pressure conduits that has been specified here? So the K omega in almost all cases is found to be behaving a different manner uh, than the other two. This is the velocity conduits and then streamline plots and the velocity plots. So this is the uh, basic uh, summary of this is. And now what I say is that I this and uh, we have carried out this one. We have modified the code, which is 3D code. In fact, that we changed. And you have studied the effect of step height, or Reynolds number, and Prandtl number, and this indicate that K epsilon resistant V2 models are almost showing similar results. But alias is you have to be incorporated in 3D, and then we need more investigation to ascertain the actual type, and which has to be brought out. Actually, we need to find out the uh, friction factor charts, friction factor values, and the Nusselt number values to really quantify these results. So that work is still uh, going on. It's taken a quite some time. Yeah, right, right, right. So that results will. The resolution issues we have addressed for one case in really the beginning. The grid independence study has been carried out for one case, but then subsequently, when you have gone to this one, it, it has to be for each and every uh, particular case. We have to take second. So when you go for a different step, otherwise it's fine. For a di different step heights, etc., we need a better uh, resolution. That is still the question. Okay. 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 No, solver is no, no, no. Solver is not steady state. Solver is an un unsteady state, and we are taking after after a uh, an invariant solution. So, so you do it in time average. Yeah, in time average. So it is not a solver is not steady state. We are taking after time average of afterwards. You say that the things are steady. That time the what this one. Heat transfer. Heat transfer. It's not conjugate. I just actually in this one, uh, this is not conjugate. This we are uh, uh, studying the um, in this one, the um, uh, heating is right at this place. So it is not a conjugate in this particular study. So you are not taking account the conductivity of the solid. No, the, the what the, the right now it is not there. This is only it's a fluid domain. This particular thing is an it's a entirely yeah, fluid where domain. Is the the, I did in uh, where are the <coughs> boundary condition for the temperature? Boundary condition for the temperature is that we have a specified value at the inlet, and there's a specified wall temperature specified at this along this length. 
This is the x direction. So it is a fixed temperature. It is a fixed temperature along the uh, lower wall so and insulated top wall the temperature, temperature boundary and there is an inlet temperature and uh, uh, homogeneous Neumann on the outlet on the temperature. Yeah, we, we have a results of an experiment which we just did to be useful for validating it. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. In your model, you have not an explicit uh, dependence on the grid. We have carried out a study on the grid for the uh, one, one case it has been done. Yes, 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 yes. We have done that. And in the model, the grid is explicitly contained or not? No, the whatever the grid we have find the K epsilon model, so that's uh, the what is called the you mean the Y plus values. Yes. So the Y plus values have been in the order of around ten for the, uh, the models which are used. And go and go that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll ask a question that you and I want to talk about. Yeah. Right. So maybe other people have some input. Uh, last fall, um, a grad student uh, interviewed over 100 people in the automotive industry individually to see how they use. So one of the questions that the student would ask is that um, um, what software do you use or what, what uh, model do you use for fluid flow? And the response was, well, we use them all. We just want to make sure that we get all of them consistent. And then he said, and then he asked the question, what tolerance can't you do? And they said, heat transfer. Actually, what they say that uh, <coughs> when the students uh, community, when they uh, learn the CFD, they just use it uh, by clicking somewhere here, but they really don't get into the uh, necessity, say, with variable density or whatever is there. So that is what, uh, so, uh, and he also has a project in which undergraduates can uh, do CFD problems on a practical uh, sense. So that's what uh, he has researched. 